Um, you know, from second scrimmage, you know, obviously we're still limited a little bit uh, in certain positions, you know, because injuries in depth. So we kind of crafted the scrimmage today, um, you know, to best utilize our, our time and our resources. You know, the, the, the ones went in more of a controlled kind of thud and, uh, protocol like we did we did last week, and uh, you know, I think we got a lot out of that. And then we allowed the twos and threes to go live, mm-hmm. which is base calls on offense, base calls on defense, allow those guys not to worry about thinking, just you know, blocking, tackling, running, throwing, catching, covering, all those things. And, uh, you know, we went through every situation from the minus one to the plus one. So we got first down, second down, third and short, medium, long, uh, red zone, goal line, backed up, all those things. So I felt we took another positive step today. How what kept Fabian useful? out today? Go ahead. What kept Fabian out today? Little bug. Yeah. You know. Like, is there a time frame Tuesday, on it? Tuesday. Okay. Yeah. What makes the situation all better for coach evaluation than just kind of a, a down and distance uh, regular drive type series? Because it guarantees that you, you get an opportunity to. Uh, to game plan, when I say game plan, to script, mm-hmm. uh, to call the play, and to, and to get those reps. If, if, if you're not doing those things, sometimes during the course of a scrimmage, you, know, you, you may not get down there, or you may get down there a bunch of times. So, so what that does is guarantee you uh, the opportunity to, and, and one you know, of our five spring goals, you know, dominate situational football and critical statistics. We just want to make sure we're giving our kids the opportunity at one spring ends to, to, to have uh, operated under all those conditions. So what are you hoping? Saw from Keaton today? Sorry. Did you like what you saw from Keaton today? I did. Uh, I, I think. Uh, you know, like anything, there's you know, a little bit with protection, a little bit with route, a little bit with the throw. But I think he completed his first four, five, or six there, and you know, uh, I think we're take, seeing small positive gains by him. Small, small positive gains by him on a, on a daily basis, and you know, uh, I'm most most improved, most uh, impressed with his improved decision making and, and, and accuracy thus far. And I, I think that comes with confidence in year two in the offense, and quite frankly, how we're protecting and. I think we're seeing some some of our receivers separate versus press press coverage, which was a, a point of emphasis this spring, and, and catch the ball uh, consistently. So so happy with his progress. What are you hoping to get accomplished over this last week? We're going to reconvene on Monday, see who we have available, but uh, you know we're going to practice Tuesday, Thursday, and kind of have a walkthrough on on Friday. So the, the practice blocks and faces are already done. So I'm going to sit down on Sunday and kind of go through them and modify, and you know the the. One additional situation that was supposed to go in this upcoming week was two minute. And that's something I think we'll be able to do. And I, I don't think it'll continue to be first and second down, third down, red zone. We'll get all those situations. I think we're just going to have to kind of cut back on some of, some of the reps, and that will probably be the only modification. Do you anticipate next Saturday uh, going more of a game situation or doing more situational type stuff like we've seen the yeah, last couple that's of weeks? It's going to be to be determined. But uh, if, it, if if next Saturday were today, it would be it would be. I mean, there's going to be some scrimmage stuff, but we're, we're going to have to do some situational stuff as well. Didn't see Tyler Dunning out there today. What's his status? Tyler, uh, Tyler made a decision to uh, enter the transfer portal and uh, you know come through. Met with Coach Marvin and I the other day, and uh, what an opportunity to get closer back to home in Florida. And uh, you know we're going to support him and try to help him get to somewhere that he feels you know comfortable finishing out his career. The two scrimmages we've watched, uh, very few turnovers, not many balls on the ground. Has that been true of the regular practices as well? Um, yeah, uh, and you know, one thing that we track every day uh, and discuss in the team meeting is explosive play margin and turnover margin. And you know, so, you know, most stat people will tell you that's the two biggest determining factors in the outcome of football games. So, uh, you know, the defense, uh, for as well as we did last year in all the statistical categories, creating turnovers and scoring on defense was something we want to improve on. And, and uh, you know, certainly creating explosive plays off- offensively is, is one where, you know, in the, in the games we we're good. We had a bunch of explosions in games we weren't. We didn't. So, uh, yeah, I'd say what, you, what you're seeing out here is pretty much indicative of, of what's occurred throughout the course of the first nine practices. A, a good give and take, and uh, you know, good plays on both sides of the ball. So, you know, we just got to continue to protect on offense, take away on defense. And I guess at the end of the play, someone's happy, happy on either side of the ball. So, you, you want you want a bunch of good plays on both sides. Brian Cole made a lot of plays. Uh, yeah. what, what are you seeing from him in this ring? He's he's another year in the system. Uh, incredibly active uh, and really kind of a, a really a really uh, instinctive blitzer. You know what I mean? He ha- he has a good knack for for uh, you know kind of slipping blockers and getting to the quarterback. And you know is a good man cover guy. Uh, you know and, and does some stuff. So he, he's kind of a he, he plays like a linebacker against a run and a, and a DB against a pass. So Brian, Brian's poised for a pretty big season. From an overall quarterback perspective, would you say all three guys are about where you want them? They'll never be where we want them, but uh, I think we are taking strides, and uh, I think, you know, 
it's kind of all relative to experience. So I, I think he, KT has, has done what we've expected from a, a you know quarterback in year two of the offense. Uh, you know, Jalen has definitely taken strides forward. Uh, you know, in the run game and the pass game, and some of the stuff that you're not seeing with the, the two quarterback or one quarterback is quarterback run game. That's something where, you know, we, uh, you know, we're going to continue to do that, but we want to focus on the things that we feel we need the most improvement. And you know, Garrett's uh, he's swimming a little bit just from a, an understanding and a speed of the game, and but uh, he's got a lot, a lot of ability and a lot of potential, and I think you see that when sometimes he'll make a throw in practice and it's the complete wrong read, but it's it's a laser and it's caught and it's it's a big play, but. Uh, you know, his thing is just going to be, you know, understanding what's going on. Uh, and he's worried about the hows now, uh, and everyone else is worried about the what's and why's. How do you I'm coach so, around that, though? How do you coach around when, it? When a guy makes a great play, but it's not the right play. You pat him on the back, you tell him great job, but you explain to him why in the future it, it probably wouldn't work out well. And, and that, that historically, I don't think you want to coach the player out of them, and I think that's some, th some things that, uh, you know, particularly quarterback coaches, you know, fall into that trap where you want them to be so ingrained into the assignment, uh, into the footwork, into the read and the throw, you, you, you coach some of the ball player out of them. And, uh, you know, with, with Trace and with Nick and, you know, hopefully with these guys, you want to have enough that they understand the system and they're playing within the confines and structure of the scheme, but at the same time give them enough latitude where you know, sometimes football players just make football plays. So it's, it's a delicate balance, but you definitely don't want to coach them out of it. You see some depth starting to develop the receiver position. Yeah, you sure do. The outside. Yeah. You asked me or were you telling me? Ask you. Oh, I thought that was a, <laughs> yeah, that was a rhetorical statement. Uh, yes, we are seeing some depth develop. Uh, you know, with Osiris and, you know, Cam and, and Malik playing the Z. You got Austin and, uh, or Dedrick and Austin uh, at the slot. And then, you know, Stevens having, having a, a very good camp and Watt behind him. And then you got some of the younger guys coming in. So, uh, yeah, we're going to need it. And like I said, the area of improvement is to have our pass game match our run game. And, uh, you know, it's, it's going to take all those guys.